Little tug. Um, I mean, you're trying to, like, your hand is basically stapled to this thing. It does a little more of a tug. So, it hurts a lot. Okay, so that's what I mean, like, it's, but, like, you say stapled, it's not like it's, like, uh, braiding, well, hand, it's not like braiding tail, through, it? it's not like braiding through my flesh. It's just... Okay, so, yeah, like, each one of your fingers yep. has a, a ribbon of metal piercing all the way through it. Um, with your like your your medical expertise, you examine this. One of them is actually going through your knuckle joint. Oh. Um, and then there is also uh, two ribbons that are going through the upper half of your palm in between your finger bones. Okay. Um, so, if you were to extricate your hand from this, you would need significant like reconstructive surgery in order to gain function in the hand again and you might not regain full function of it so this is how um, you become dr strange yep you uh, God. It, it would take a very good surgeon to uh repair yeah the damage it would take me that. yeah it would take fucking me god damn it you basically have to like dis disconnect and like reconnect muscle like uh like ligaments and like muscle tissue uh from each of your bones <laughs> that are like affected so, all right which means um slowly and methodically vivisecting your own hand and then putting it back together yep with uh, Zero's help. Yeah. But it would be forever. Alright, so here's what is going to happen. I'm going to stay attached to this goddamn thing as long as I can and possibly utilize it again and get as much information I can out of these travelers. Tight-lipped bastards. Uh, after, <laughs> after that, after we run the course as long as it can be run, I will see what happens if I can uh, remove my arm by way of them letting me go and perhaps the damage will be minimal then hooray if not we will uh, attempt to extricate in which case I have a lot of work ahead of me if that deems impossible amputation and I will just be metal arm and leg rudge <laughs> so break Darth Rudge yes I will be Darth I can get rudge. you a laser sword Perfect. Uh, the DM's coming for your last limb. Yep. At this point, I've committed to three. Yeah. <laughs> Might as well make it a... Torso, man. Yep. <laughs> oh, fear, torso, man. All, all your arms and your arms and legs become sensors? Yes. <laughs> Maximum uh, sensor. Upgrade sensors. I'm sensor On the bright man. side, you can give, like, John Willoughby a run for his money now. Mm-hmm. Uh... Eventually. Oh yeah, what, what, that that is good. Sensor Man did gain uh, om, omniscience briefly. Yeah, uh, that's, holy that's shit! That's a pretty good sense. Yep, I am true. That, that's just Sensor Man's true potential unlocked. <laughs> just like I see all. Yep. Oh, that's you into the Avatar all. state? Yep. Yeah, Sensor Man's Avatar state. Yep. Becoming a tower, <laughs> a sensor yep. tower. A sen yep. Yep. Just a radio <laughs> tower. Just with a lot of fucking satellite arrays and uh, you become the Hubble telescope. Yep. Boom. <laughs> I just tap into the consciousness of that. Yeah. Great. Um. All right. So, as, as this sort of conversation is transpiring, uh, you, you get a, uh, well, actually, um, one of the the Dawnspire uh, guards sort of comes into the room and says, uh, sort of looks at you and says, uh. Uh, Star Angel, oh, why, uh, Star Angels, you, you're alive. You, I mean, you're awake. Yes, I am both of those things. Thank you for asking and caring. And kind of like kneels uh, in front of both of you Thank and you like for bows his head <laughs> uh, and says, I am here to convey a message from Father Castor. Uh, yeah. The. Coalition ambassador wishes to speak in person, uh, in a uh, neutral ground. Does that exist? The 
Uh, what, like a graveyard? The gravestone location was outside of the walls of Dawnspire. Oh, where their missiles can reach. Cool. Well, I mean, <laughs> I can reach there as well. The conditions of this meeting is that the ambassador requires that you are present, Star Angel, and he indicates you, Willow. Oh, good. Right. He doesn't know about me. Or at least give a shit at the moment. Because yeah. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'm going to send Zero like in my place. If he even cared about me going, <laughs> I mean, they probably don't even know you're here. Right. Yeah, I was gonna say. I... No, but I mean, they know that you have an ally, another DB, don't they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I just figure, yeah. Well, they also know that this isn't your only location. Right. They don't know where you, the rest of your forces are right now, but they are out there. Yeah, because I snuck right the fuck in. Yeah. You the surprisingly okayish job yep <laughs> i was able to jam some shit and get all right in, get in yeah i mean i can't really argue with that all right uh, so um, you're, so you're going <clears throat> yeah i mean let's be honest they're gonna try and dick me over one way or another <laughs> so uh, i might as well at least try and help out Don Spire while I can. You keep trying to keep contact your friends. Yes. Uh, what shall I do if I'm able, able to access the weapon again? Shoot them. Well, who's them? <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, Willow just like says that under her breath, like condescendingly, like, I just hate these people at this point. <laughs> she did her best to try and like diplomacy with them, and then they were just D bags. <laughs> I'm like, well, who's which them? There's lots of them. Or should I focus the, the... I'm only probably going to get one or two shots before I pass the fuck out again. What kind of... Actually, on that note, what kind of consciousness did you have, like, outside of the tower? Like, when you were the tower, like, were you aware that there were people in the same room as you, like, here? I can't... Did I hear people talking yeah. to me? Yeah, you were aware. <laughs> it, not... it, it got gradually less focused on that and more focused on outside especially more you like concentrated especially when i uh yeah concentrated harder failed rolls yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's what i was meant yeah mm -hmm. so the more i like lose myself to the tower i say the you know or become one with it the less i know about my surroundings because honestly like as I said before, this is the father's territory. I don't want to make diplomatic calls for him. Well, is um, he here still? He's not in the room presently. No. Okay. The uh, the guy is there. So I mean, he's kneeling on the ground, presumably yep. waiting to be dismissed. Yep. Um. So the father isn't around, though. Not in the no, not yeah, within. Yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Okay, yeah, not within. Hey, come in here. We got shit to discuss. Yeah. All right. Well, my personal feelings towards biggest threat is the big old fortress cannon, because mm -hmm. that thing can shoot one hell of a cannon. Mm -hmm. I w I would say if one of it has two cans, one of them is definitely no longer operational because it got deleted from existence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I was referring to. Sorry. Yeah. There is maybe one that still works. Yeah, that's, that's sure. what I was referring to. Um, so so that... honestly, like my personal opinion would say the central like location on that fortress. I mean, I, I honestly don't know, the to flying, be completely honest. The flying fortress? Yeah, the one that's parked on the ground now. Okay. <laughs> so focus on that first. And then... Yeah, I mean, like I, I imagine if we, like that's their, like they have a lot of forces just in general. I imagine they're not going to abandon that thing. Um, so I imagine they have to have forces in and around the area. Mm -hmm. So taking that thing out may cause extra collateral damage, but I honestly have no idea. Like this is, <laughs> this is above Willow's pay grade in military strategy. Hmm. All right. So focus on the flying fortress on the ground. All right. Gotcha. Now what, uh, is the other contingency if I cannot uh, activate the tower? 
Uh, if shit goes bad, get out of here any way you can. Mm. <laughs> and meet somewhere? I am really concerned on whether... If, if they attack us, I don't know if we'll, I'll be able to meet you anywhere. But if I can, I would say, yeah. Um, I think we should focus on evacuating the people of Dawnspire. I think their safety comes above all else. Well, getting out of this predicament I am in currently in, personally, may be a task in itself. And I may need to hide in a trash can inside Zero's compartment on my way out. <laughs> Just saying. I don't know what yeah, will I, happen when I detach from this thing. I am I have no idea either. Looking, <laughs> she just kind of like looks over your body like, yeah, you don't look great, I'll be honest. <laughs> nope. nope. Based on what I saw underneath the armor, you're you're not looking great. I don't feel great. Am I still at one MDC? Yep. yep. Uh, you don't. haven't had a chance to actually rest. Nope, nope. Yeah, I don't feel and, great. And being unconscious in a, like a psychic-induced coma does not count as resting. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> why not? Um, <laughs> you give me I, one reason why it doesn't. One, actually, just the, one. The one, the one like thing we're discussing torture. is... Fine. <laughs> That's good enough. The other thing that we're discussing is that we don't want this tower to fall under collision hands, so if you have any ideas of making a really, really big explosion or something in here, <laughs> can you do that before leaving? Well, perhaps I can target itself and self destruct I don't know. That Ooh, be... actually. What if you targeted one of the other towers? I don't know. I have no idea what that would do. I didn't even think of such a thing. I well, mean neither, but like I mean so this thing I, I I obviously like I haven't had a chance to talk to you about like what the hell you did in this core of this thing. Oh something ridiculously stupid. But what if that was a way to like loop the circuit and awaken the other towers? Well I, uh, so, I could potentially do the same thing to the other towers. The problem is getting out alive. Yep, that is a problem. I, I will agree with you. <laughs> uh, doing what I did to this tower is what made me like this. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm not talking about you going inside the other tower. Because, I mean, hell, if that was a thing, I would just go in there because I'm immune to that shit. <laughs> Oh, um, well then let's no, do that. I, meant, I can tell you how to how to do things. No, I mean, I mean, like, what if you just like shot one of those towers, though? Well, I know I know what you meant, but I don't. I have no idea what that would do, and that would. Uh, I mean, I, for one, I know what that would do. It would render me unconscious and a puddle of mess again, unknown when I would wake up, and then with an unknown result of the tower. So that's that's what I know it would do. But you shot the thing twice before you fell unconscious last time. Right, but so I'm, you get a free warning shot is what I hear. Uh, possibly, but I uh, that was at that was at peak, that was at peak Rudge performance after taking a leg loss. Now I'm leg loss and un leg slightly loss. unconscious. Yes, I'm leg loss. Legless, You're legless, Lego, Lego loss. Yes, <laughs> and I'm on drugs, and I mean. The, the list goes on of why I think I'll only get one shot. Okay. Well, I don't think we have the capability of bringing us all over there to, like, shoot the tower a million times with those things. No, but... Hmm. Perhaps I can... Instead of focusing did, on what actually, firing, what? I can focus on activating the other towers. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's kind of what I was talking about originally. Like, what yeah. if you could focus on that? What actually activated the towers? Do we actually know, or did it just happen? Uh, Rudge, what pushing do you mean activated? Buttons. Me pushing like, buttons. Okay, you're well, pushing like, buttons. You mean the tower, the, the, the current, like the temple that you're in? Like, why it is up? Like, like yeah, yeah, no, 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 like, what did, like, Rudge do in the core thing that, like, hyper-activated it uh, and energizing? So there were a couple of, like, like, um crystal like lens type things the only part of the tower that is not metal by the way um and he was just like and forcibly like moving them around and reorganizing them okay yep. and he presumably put them in the correct combination to trigger something yeah okay that that's kind of what i was thinking but i couldn't honestly remember if that was like this or skyrim and then it started to auto auto sync yeah, 
he he did the equivalent of like uh like jump starting or like hot wiring yep I the hot, tower. I hot wired the tower and yeah. the tech not that difficult <laughs> well i think you should literally focus on trying wire. to activate the other towers if possible or trying to convince the others the travelers to activate the other towers or something right i, I think honestly like having you go unconscious firing this thing is not worth it no no um because now, even uh, if you did obliterate some of their forces it's not going to be enough right it's pretty much like a last ditch thing if you know if it all goes to hell i can at least fire one blast off to the, uh give us the shock value that hit them hardest yeah. previously yes yeah, so yep. I, I can give i can give us one more last advantage before <clears throat> unconscious i go if it comes to that otherwise i'll yeah. work on activating the others uh the other thing was uh do you do you burn incredibly hot when you activate your other form uh not anymore. The core of me is still plasma e, but ah. now more of a shell. Right. Chilled out a little bit. Right. Yeah. So I was going to say, possibly we didn't need the disintegration beams if you could just sit there and burn your way through. Oh, that, that's how I got to the one of the other towers before. Ah, yes, yes. And when I did, I went into a room full of drones that attacked me, so. <laughs> All right. Because uh, we, I know that these towers connect at the bottom. Yeah, they, I, I told I told you about that before too. All uh, right. Oh, they all connect in like that central area where I said yeah. I was like collecting water or whatever. Right. Yes, I remember. Some now. reservoir. Yes. Yep. Artificially made. I, I was down there, and then I came back to this one and turned it on. <clears throat> anyway, shall I begin trying to activate the others? I mean, I think it's, it's it's worth it if you think if you think you even have like the tiniest bit of chance, I would say start trying. And I guess I'll go to a meeting, All right. damn board meetings. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, and Michael Scott's calling a meeting. Yeah, damn it. Um. Okay, so we'll d do that. Uh, is zero going with Willow? Uh, yeah, because I wouldn't mind having like a eyes and ears over. The there. only problem is you don't have a way out then if he gets ah integrated. Piss. Yeah, he's got to stay here. He's got to be my life link or my lifeline. Yeah. I. I mean. I just wanted to send him just to have just kind of have eyes yeah and a voice. Ears there. I mean, yep. you would probably you could probably get in communication with Willow. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's, assuming there's no radio jamming, I mean, that's well within range of even short range radios. True. Yep. But yeah. then, I mean, they'll probably they'll probably be not like tracing it, but listening to who's on, who are you talking to, kind of thing. They're I mean, curious. if they were talking, if you were talking to Zero, it'd be the same thing. Right. Right. It is so. the same thing. So. Yeah. All right. I don't care at that point. I'll talk to you. Well, I'm like, yeah, it's me in the tower. I'll fuck you up if you try anything. <laughs> <laughs> I got my finger on the trigger. Yep. It's Can't take it off. Yep, it's it, it is lashed to it. <laughs> um, all right, so Willow, you go down um, to assemble sort of the uh, <clears throat> um, the group of the 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 truce party, basically, um, which is not very big. Yeah, um, I imagine Father Castor. Uh, says that he he talked specifics with the coalition to just see what was like permitted basically, and bare bones, vehicle for transport out to the location and, um, crew of the vehicle, uh, two people, um, as well as any uh, ambassadors who have to be unarmed, um, which, I mean, Willow's Willow, yep, uh. And they they know that, so you know. Um, <laughs> they requested to speak with me. If they expected anything else, yep. <laughs> uh, so the uh, well, one th one thing to note uh, as as you're leaving the tower, uh, you do pass by Doctor Torres, who has uh, in the time that you got you've been doing your thing, uh, retrieved uh, or located and retrieved those old missiles that Phoenix mentioned, and is. I Foreseeing their uh, transportation into the center of the tower. I like it. 
uh, in the event that such armaments have to be used. The event that it doesn't go as planned. Yep. Uh, wow. So you, Father Castor, and two uh, Dawnspire guards get into one of the like uh, uh, the ATVs, uh, like the armored ATVs that Dawnspire has. And you drive out away from the wall, probably like maybe a mile away from the wall or so. Still very easily within sight of the tower, but out of, like, most conventional weapons range. Yeah. Um, and the uh, coalition, both the Death's Head and the, the Flying Fortress, now not so Flying Fortress, uh, are uh, a ways out from their... Uh, about equidistant, although not in the same location. Um, it looks like, and I guess you you would have probably gotten this information from your drones who've been guarding. I'm assuming. Yep. Uh, they they seem to be trying to just like strip the death's head for salvage and like take as much of the material as they can. Yeah. Uh, that thing is like beyond fucked. There's no way they're getting it in the air again. Yep. So. Uh, and then the mobile fortress is like there are like the left side of it is pretty much unsalvageable. They're trying to like get what remains able to be mobile again. Yeah, just trying to like dry rig it for like, mobilize and build uh, fortifications for defense if it comes to that. Yep. Um, but uh, as you get to the agreed upon location, um, you see a coalition APC uh, heading towards you. Um, it looks to be like a, not, it, it's definitely not like a combat focused APC. So, you know, it only has like six weapons. Yep. Um, <laughs> classic <laughs> coalition. Yep. Uh, but it approaches and rolls to a stop. A little ways away from your vehicle, and uh, the the two crew of the APC get out. They're in like light armor. They have weapons, but they are holding them sort of at the ready. But all casual alike, as yeah. are your escorts. And um, stepping out from the APC is a older gentleman. Uh, with kind of like tanned skin, um, a medium length white beard. Uh, kind of looks like um, if Gandalf was on vacation in Hawaii for a little while. And uh, then came back and got into like a uh, sort of. Uh, it's like a ceremonial, like military vestment kind of thing with like the little shoulder. Uh, yeah, the pauldrons. Yeah. Uh, no armor, though, and no weapons from the looks of it. Entirely ceremonial garb, club. And uh, this guy uh, sort of gestures for his his uh, men to, to wait at the vehicle and sort of with his arms folded in front of him uh, walks towards you across the, the intervening space. Um, before we get into this conversation, Rudj, I want you to give me a d100 roll for your your side of this. Alright, uh, yeah, 60. 60? Yep. Alright. Oh, um, sorry, nope, 62. 62, okay, yeah. so you're, you're moving, uh, whenever you try to, like, focus on the tower, you get that, like, lance of pain, so you're, you're trying to, like, move the... The, like the symbols and the diagrams around to like reconfigure things. Um, trying to remember like what you did before and like build off of that knowledge, but uh, the the headache is like really affecting your abilities here, and you're you're acutely aware of it. Um. So you're you're hoping that if. Basically, you're hoping if something happens at this point that you're going to be able to whip something 
out of your ass. But because right now you're not really making too much progress. All right. In the short term. Yep. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm working with, you know, this shit that I can barely understand, and I'm, I'm a subject. There, there, some, there's some kind of process is going on. I don't know. This is tough. <laughs> uh, so. Willow, Castor, and this ambassador, um, you meet probably 50 feet away from each of your vehicles in the center. Um, the ambassador stops before you guys make it fully to him and kind of gives a, uh, a small bow and says, uh, Father Castor, I presume. And uh, Willow, are you still wearing like your armor and closed helmet and stuff? She doesn't have any of her armor. Remember, she right. was close. so are yeah. you wearing what are you wearing? Oh, she's just metal form. Okay, yep. And you, I presume, are Willow. Correct. And you are? Pleasure to meet you. I am Coalition Ambassador Carlos Morgan. Writing that in roll 20. <laughs> Carlos Morgan. Yes, original resident of Chi Town, but I have seen much of the coalition in my time serving the Emperor. Like that or different? That is correct, yeah. It seems we have gotten off to something of a rocky start here. Yes, generally bringing an invading force to say hello is a bad way to do business. Yes, I have heard that before. Um, and yet you have it is your ways. effective in most circumstances. However, I am, I represent a different branch of the coalition government. One that we regrettably do not use as much as we perhaps could. Especially when such curious circumstances are involved. And beings such as yourself looking at well the situation here is complicated and i am not about to pretend that our factions are going to be friendly in any way after this but I believe the last engagement has shown us that pursuing ongoing hostilities with the city of Dawnspire and its allies would be ill-advised. I am willing to offer a truce to the both of you on the conditions that uh, um, uh, a truce to the both of you uh, to the effect that the coalition military and its constituents uh, will not knowingly trespass on your territories or engage in hostile actions against your forces for the next five years with the assumption that you do not do the same. With the stipulation that the forces present are allowed to retrieve all of their damaged and destroyed equipment and the remains of those lost in the conflict if there are any. What say you to this proposal? I would like to, before we... I will start by saying I wholeheartedly like those terms. I believe they're both fair and agreeable to both sides. But I want to make very specific 
agreement on where our borders truly are. That because is something that I imagine we needed to discuss as you are well out of states are have no knowledge of where you claim our borders to be. I say the coalition has claimed territory to the west of their headquarters. Don't leave that claimed territory. You would claim everything? No. I would claim that the territory in between our borders should be a no man's land. Neither of our forces should travel over there. If you need to pursue a hostile entity, of course you're able to do so. But I believe having a respectable, long range no man's land is safe. A buffer state between our territories is better for everyone. That way, anyone that is curious cannot cause problems for either faction. So you would propose uh, the area between... Can you bring up the coalition? big map? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. before... Do, do, we're talking yeah. territory here. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the area between this city and the, the coalition border is approximately 76 miles. Would you propose a buffer zone of perhaps 50 miles away from coalition border? Yes, that is. None of our forces will enter anywhere near within 50 miles of that border. That is completely fair. Very well. That gives us here in Roswell roughly 20 miles to head east and hunt and do as they see fit. And I do not believe the Collision has any excuse to travel outside of their borders, seeing as it is their claimed borders. If you're traveling outside of it, you are openly outside your territory, and I believe that's just looking for trouble at that point. I will say once more that I do believe we need to agree that if there is a hostile entity, both sides shall be allowed to pursue such enemies so long as it doesn't enter the direct territory of the others. I know that there are things that can teleport or have ways of traveling great distances in short amounts of time, and I do not want to hinder your defensive forces by saying they can't cross into the neutral territory. Any... Any uh, official traversal of the neutral zone would have to be confirmed and approved by the associated rulers of the land, naturally. Yes. That being said, my settlement mm -hmm. is of a secret and it will not be revealed to you because it is clear that your forces have one goal in mind when they see a new settlement, so I will not reveal that location, but I will promise that my forces will not enter anywhere near that 50-mile border. That is our purpose here. This division of troops was assigned to secure the borders of the coalition state of Lone Star by ensuring no local threats would emerge to attack hard-working coalition citizens. I you believe have... that this truce will enforce that. And that is what I propose to your other captain as well, Commander. I spoke to uh, Commander Crawford prior to this meeting. And he told me of your conversation. I do hope that you will give the commander uh, a little bit of uh, leeway with his verdict. Uh, I'm sure you understand that his hands were tied in the matter. I myself, Hardly. however, are, am a representative of much higher authority. I answer directly to the Emperor. 
and that is who I was looking to speak to beforehand. So, oh. I do appreciate that you took the time to discuss with him, my deal. And I will tell you this, and you can pass this word along to the Emperor, that that deal still stands. That if the, ta the Coalition wants allies to the West that are not occupied, we would happily join hands. You guys are a force protecting humanity, and we are doing the same thing. We have different methods, but our goals are a lot more similar than you will ever imagine because I see now that the coalition is not an imagining force. They are a military first and foremost. We are indeed the foremost force on this continent. And that is something that our friends in the military are quite dedicated to maintaining. I'm sure you understand such things, having to uh, see to the defense of your own domain. To be completely honest, your ways are what I would consider futile and honestly barbaric I came to this planet to attempt to hu help humans and I look at you as what could have been some of the most highly regarded heroes of this planet and I see just another oppressor no better than the demons that come from the pits and it disappoints me greatly but I was told by Crawford that you were interesting in interested in the ways of uh, ethics and political beliefs. Willow will drop her metal form. Kind of look eye to eye with this guy because she does respect that he has ceremonial clothing on rather than armor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I do want you to truly understand that everyone here, and she points to the tower behind and to the north where she knows that they've we've engaged before. The people of Dawnspire and my people are out here hoping to help humans and good DBs, whether you like them or not. There are no demon worshippers. Nothing like that. Nothing that would ever threaten the coalition. We are truly people that one day could be an amazing ally to the Coalition, but when these five years are up, we need to have another negotiation because based on what I've seen in the Coalition, you guys are going to wait that five years, build up your forces, and then attempt to crush us. And with that knowledge, I will be doing the same. We will not ever assault the Coalition unless you assault us first. I will give this one transgression, this one invading force, a pass because I do fully understand your points of view. But understand that if I ever see a Coalition invading force, we will be a thorn that will be impossible to pick out from the Coalition. We are not like the city of Tolkien that builds up a strong force and tries to withstand the coalition. There are far more intelligent ways of taking down a great empire. Understand that I am an alien species, not a dimensional being. I come from the stars. My civilization spans dozens, hundreds of worlds. The coalition is impressive to this planet, but they are nothing in the eye of the galaxy. Understand that I want to be friends with the Coalition so long as they can treat our people with respect. And so far, I have not seen that. Such things are rarely seen in such a short span of time. Yes, we shall see what five years brings us. Speaking I'm sure of the situation will be much different then. I will also say that if you want to have communications 
I highly encourage it within those five years. I do believe that keeping an open line of communication is a better way than dealing with situations like this immediately. We will build, well, you have several forces that have great range capabilities, clearly. If any of your people wish to speak with us, send a small vessel at relatively low speeds and send out a communication and we will respond with a similar vessel. He nods. Acknowledged. Communication may be difficult to... Regular communication may be difficult to establish over this terrain, but I will speak with our commanders in Lone Star and see what can be accomplished. As I said, a simple vessel with long, short to long range communications should suffice if such a vessel decides to enter into as long. I mean, if you can reach your border, I mean, 50 miles, that's almost within range of yeah, um, robot like <laughs> communications. Mm -hmm. Um, we will respond. Um, more importantly, I do believe that we have things to do, and I believe your folks do as well. I wish you well in your war of unity. Indeed, I <laughs> hope that this treaty will ensure that we remain out of each other's way for the f foreseeable future. There is one thing that I do hope that your um, Crawford mentioned is that there is a force building up in the far south and I do say so very heavy handedly the force that is preparing down there is a true danger mm -hmm. uh, which force are you talking about uh, freak show stuff uh, well, I guess we'll say uh, in character uh, he says you refer to the armies of the Pecos Empire not at all the Pecos Empire. Well, yeah, I, I, they're the Pecos. Are they technically, or is that just? Trick Show is a, aligned with the Pecos Empire. Yeah, I, I would say it's the 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 one I know of for sure is an ally of the Pecos Empire. I don't know of their command structure very well, so I can't say. But the demon that we encountered and fought with, his plans are very far-reaching, and they're very well thought out. I recommend to you and your emperor that you keep an eye and keep your southern borders, borders safe. They are building up something down there. Of that, I assure you we will do. I have spoken to demons before in much the same way that we I speak to you now. And... I will tell you that the campaign of unity is strong against many threats. I have confidence we will emerge victorious. As do I. Um, Father Castor uh, speaks up. Uh, he, he seemed content. Fuck you, shoots missiles at us. <laughs> <laughs> just, just waits for all of it yep. as we're just total, like up the missile. Total uh, flip. Yep. Um, no, he, he speaks up, which he, he seemed content to, to let you uh, speak, uh, as you definitely have the more imposing presence of the two of, them, uh, of you, with like, you know, freaking metal, like, hardcore alien superpower yeah i mean like just to like refresh like so she looked identical to her normal form but she's just like silvery metal with metal with like the pink plasma kind of like eating yeah. around the edges metal in all senses of the word yep um but yeah he speaks up and says i think there are some logistical details we should work out to ensure that understanding of this truce is mutual on both sides and uh 
the ambassador of Morgan nods and says, Indeed, um, let us speak of the uh, exact nature of this uh, exclusion zone. Um, and the the finer details of the truce are worked out at that point. Uh, it's not nothing really like important is said yeah. after that. It's just like working out the the details, the logistics. Um, yep. But yeah, I mean, it, it takes like a couple of hours, and surprisingly, the coalition does not seem to be trying anything. They agree to the terms pretty readily, and uh, when the the meeting is over, uh, the ambassador returns, and uh, they continue going about, uh, you know, retrieving all of their their stuff. Yep. They kind Perfect. Of so while, so while they're retreating, ah, uh, just get. <laughs> in the back. Yep. <laughs> Idiots. Um, yeah. So, uh, situation diffused for the time being. <laughs> that seems to be our thing. <laughs> All it took was firing a, a alien super weapon twice. Yeah. I mean, that's the whole point of an alien campaign. Yep. We just need to get a few more of those. Yeah. <laughs> and and make them handheld. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So with that concluded, um, C -c -c we can kind of... Uh, I mean, obviously there's some important things to address, namely Rudge. Uh, uh, Rudge's general me. situation, uh, huh. being legless and that's it. That's my uh, name, Legless to, Joe. To a tower. Um, in terms of the coalition, that is more or less wrapped up for now. Um, in in Dawnspire, at least, uh, they do gather most of their salvage. Uh, not all of it, I should say. Um, there is some stuff that they just don't bother to take, which I'm <laughs> assuming Willow will absolutely <laughs> want. Um, basically, it's like the the hollowed out husk slash skeleton of like the ruined parts of their their ships, yeah. which is a reasonable amount of of uh, metal. Yep. Um, not particularly useful for most, but pretty useful for Willow. Um. So yeah, we'll we'll get to that in a second. Uh, but that that also takes like a couple of days uh, for them to to pack up and get out. Um, and uh, in that time, Rudge, uh, what what are you, what is your long term plan here? Um, Are you just gonna be here now? Is get this you a chair. Life? Yeah, I'm gonna get you a, a more comfortable chair. Yeah, yeah. For one, okay. So short term plan, more comfortable chair. Long term plan, I build myself a little laboratory around this thing. <laughs> oh, we need you like one of the grabby hands. Your first, like, so. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I, like I said, uh, now that now that we have some time and I don't need to fire this thing or, you know, retreat, I'm gonna take a little more time and try to talk to these guys. Uh, okay. Maybe get so a little more rest. Try and study it a little bit more and figure out yep. some more things before I uh, detach. I'm, I'm, I'm also for... don't I'm... know if you can. I mean, that's also another thing. Are you gonna try and like figure out how to make it detach from you? Yeah, that's kind of that. Now, I guess now that we don't need the other towers, um, I guess I wouldn't mind trying to activate them. But what I want mostly is to. Uh, yeah, let ha have them let go of my arm. Okay, yeah. So it's like now I'm trying to just contact them for another reason. Um, is there anything that you want to try and like decipher or like figure out about the tower before you attempt to disconnect your arm from it? Hmm. 
what is it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna need a little bit more <laughs> than that. I guess like damn it. Just try and or, or, like maybe just try and figure out it's more purpose. about its structure, or its purpose. It's, yeah, it's like purpose. What it was. See if it has any function, other functions. Yeah, maybe? like what it was doing. Like what, what, what is it here for? What okay. what did just they put it here for? System diagnostics, basically. Pretty much. Okay. When was it installed? Installation date and running processes. Yeah, so you're going to be sitting there for a while still. Yeah. So yeah, I need uh, a real comfy chair. Moving it around. I need to lay down. I'm tired. So, yeah, you could you could probably in that time get some kind of sitting situation figured out. Basically, just a stool for your trash can to lay on. All right. Um. And. Uh, that that's going to occupy you for the next couple of days. Probably we're going to have you make some rolls here in a little bit. All um, right. But uh, anything that Willow wants to do in that time that the coalition's still packing up. Um. <laughs> in all honesty, Willow would want to help them, but she'd probably be like told to go away like multiple yeah, times. Yeah, that's, that's like, probably like, not like, happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like Willow would like first suggest that, and then when everyone's like, no, <laughs> she'd probably be like, but I could really help. I could make this a lot quicker for them. And like, no. And she's like, fine, let's go make my own broken spaceship, blackjack, and hookers. <laughs> yeah. um, so you're just like really anxiously waiting for them to see on, if they, what they leave and stuff. Yeah, yeah, like, she's, like, super pumped for that. But actually, like, the moment that her time frees up, she's going to go try and, like, help Cassie with any of her robotic stuff she has going on. Okay, yeah. She wants to see if she can get that robot, like, fully good and going. Yeah, so, um, Cassie has been been upgrading the robot uh, as her, like, main project. Um, she seems like both... She, she's in a very like weird headspace when Willow goes to talk to her. She seems both like, uh, like anxious and um, nervous and excited, but also disappointed about like the continued threats to her her city. Like she she's ready to to fight to defend her city, but also like she's definitely never killed a person. Oh yeah, and like knows how to pilot a robot in theory but like has never actually done it in combat um yeah yeah that that's actually what i was gonna get to next and so it's I just want her... like also like seeing a super weapon fire was like both cool and also just like deeply existentially terrifying oh yeah um and you know all that <laughs> i um the reason why i want to help her get that robot like fully going like where there's like no kinks anymore Yep. Aside from like general maintenance, is I'm gonna tell her like we're gonna get more than one robot up and going here, and we need to actually practice piloting these things like in semi-simulated combat. Oh uh, yeah, I mean that she is definitely more excited about that. And, um, and that like, yeah. So I'm I'm gonna mention to her be like, my goal is that they left a whole bunch of broken shit out there. We're going to try and turn a bunch of that broken shit into something that can simulate targets for you in that thing. All right. So I think you need to get yourself a couple of ace pilots to... Because I'm assuming it's a multi-person robot, or is it a single person, like um, a large power armor? It We is... haven't discussed full... Actually, we have the... I think you have the note for... It, yeah, I don't. I don't, uh, I, don't I don't think we determined crew. No, we we just got the salvage uh, robot. Oh, crew one or oh, two. Yeah, one or two. Yeah, so like, it can have a single person. Uh, it is probably easier to pilot with two people. Yeah, yeah. You always pilot. want the second person. So yeah, definitely. So. Um, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna like start auditions for her co-pilot. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah, I mean like. Dawnspire has people who are vaguely aware of how to pilot, but like not. Yeah, good. I mean like, the big the big thing is like I want somebody that she picks out and like yeah totally like you know is in sync with, not someone that's gonna like eventually try and like phase her out. Right. You want to be drift compatible. Uh, yeah. yeah. 
Exactly. <laughs> or I will drift them into space. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, wow. <clears throat> the thing is that I, I feel like we need to get at least a few light robots up and going. Yeah, but, just for... Like, because the thing is, like, if we if we can't defend our settlement, that's fine. We can pack up and get the hell out of there. Like, they can't do that. Mm. We need something that can pose an actual force and be like, hey, no. Nah. Yeah, you can defeat us, but it's going to cost you a lot to do so. Um, yeah, so that that's definitely a, a, a good project, both improving and, like, uh, polishing up the robot and, and, like, looking for robot crew as well as, like, future assembly. Yeah. Um, so go ahead and give me a... Uh, mechanical engineering, or if you have some kind of like robot skill, I don't think you have yeah. a robot thing. I do. I actually have robot mechanics specifically. Robot mechanics, that's the one. Yeah, like she's like a super robot, and that's uh, that's yeah. her like specialty. That and robots and power armor, because robots and power share the same category. For Cassie too. That is like, if I could say, amazing success. So she needs a. What is that? Uh, what level are we? Five now? Six? Six, I believe. So she needs a mid eighties, and I got a twenty-four. Nice. All right. Um, so the uh, the current robot is like it's pretty bare bones in terms of armor, uh, as well yeah. as just like core functionality. It's it's a little jank. Um, yeah. So you work to uh, sort of tune out the bugs and refine what is already there. Um, just to like improve the the overall structure and uh, effectiveness, and it's definitely running a lot smoother at the end of the these this couple of days. Um, not to mention, pretty fun project, and it's it's definitely like a nice change of pace for Willow in terms yeah. of like not having to deal with a bunch of like shithead like coalition military douches. Uh, yep. And just being able to like do her thing, and she also gets to talk to Cassie. That's always yep, fun. Yeah, exactly. A much nicer human to talk to, <laughs> like the one human she connected with. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, and Cassie's d mood is definitely increased uh, by by her her presence. Um, one thing that mm. does need to come up. Uh, how often does Will need uh, sunlight for sustenance? Uh, so there's no specification for it. It just says that they naturally, like plant creatures, they naturally eat sunlight, basically. Okay. Yeah, it's just like you need a supply of sunlight. Yeah, like, I mean, it doesn't let's see most plants see. Yeah, they turn radiant energy from sun or artificial sources into food. Uh, same general hunger rules as the mineral creatures. So I think, let's see. I'll open that book up really quick. I think if I remember correctly, like an hour of full sunlight or like four hours of cloudy sunlight counts. Mm. If I remember correctly, I think that's what I originally really? Yeah. The reason why I bring this up uh, is because They've the... locked out the sun. It was cloudy the day of the battle. Um, since that day, Oof. the sky has not cleared. It's been four days. Um, and it's like darker clouds. Um, kind of like the, the... They look like rain clouds, but there hasn't been any rain. Yeah. Um, it's not it's not enough that you like aren't getting any sustenance from it but you feel like you have to be outside almost all day to like get enough energy to keep yourself from like feeling sort of drained yeah. and it's generally just kind of like not super fun like this this region of earth is generally very sunny and it's really nice um but this is like eating like 
uh, gas station food all week. Yeah, I mean, I think I think the like a big part of it was the 